It's time once again, again, for the Real People Multi Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. We're beginning with another, uh, another new empire, and it is the Russians back again. Uh, they've, they, this is their second time on the world stage. This time they're, I forget who had them before. Maybe Cowboy, or maybe it was Giraffe. I don't know. I don't remember who ran the Russians before. Um, but this time it's Giraffe, and they have a ton of counters. Uh, they started off not only with a few discounts on infantry and light horses as last time, but they also started out with um, Peter here, who is both an administrator and a builder and an invisible man. So they have all these counters. Now, the Russians, and I'm going to talk about this because I think Giraffe's got a decent shot at, at uh, making this work, because of especially because of how how much she starts with and just because of the geopolitical stage currently. Um... They score by having a majority in different regions, three particular regions. One is Europe, which currently the Ukrainians have uh, pretty solid control of. Then Asia, which uh, her own Mongolians actually, I think, have the majority there. Uh, but also is there's there's some units here from the Phoenicians. Uh, and, you know, I guess the Pharaonic Egyptians could expand that, but that wouldn't make any sense. So... In Asia, she's kind of competing with herself, but that's not the end of the world because maybe they can work together. And you know, if they're if the Russians are second place in Asia, they still get two points. Um, and then finally, India, which no one has been in India for a long time. And if you recall, I think it was the Guptas um, that Giraffe had. She uh, she's used to being in India. She's used to having a presence in India. And it might have been even that counter set that was there. So if they can get a decent presence in Europe good presence in Asia and a good presence in Asia, or in India, <laughs> India, this uh, might be a good empire for Giraffe to take to the to the end of the game if she can uh, make it there. Uh, so remember, she is working on not getting eliminated right now. So it's still a good deal in front of Cowboy, uh, but still a ways to go for the next elimination. So a lot can happen. I, I'm really not going to, I don't feel comfortable making any sort of calls at this time on that matter. In the midst of trade and progress, we just had a big, uh, big trade between the Zimbabweans and the Franc Egyptians, one that I think might have changed the relationship. Uh, just a little bit review about their history. The Zimbabweans were, were put here by Giraffe partially as a way of stymieing. Uh, runt or trying to stymie. She, she went on an offensive adding different empires. Interesting, Giraffe's actually gotten more African empires since then, but has not chosen to put them down just now. For uh, for example, she put down the Russians when she she had a couple other different African empires she could be put, put down, but she realized she needs to get some points. Anyway, so she, she's she been trying this like trading thing, this trading offensive against the Franco Egyptians, having a nice stack here so the Franco Egyptians can't use military or it'd be very costly for them to try and extinguish her militarily and just doing trade after trade partially because the Zimbabweans get a bonus every time they win trades but they, they haven't had very much luck um you know over time she's been get, devoting yellow cards to the Zimbabweans and whatnot but giraffe basically just had a really bad role she had the advantage dice wise but um kind of in this new system it's really just about who has the most attack dice and who and defense dice and who or who has the least of these threes and fours and if you see this this was giraffe's color she had a lot of threes and fours um runt did not have any so she was able to cream or got rid of two and stole them actually and didn't just d d discard them but stole two of the zimbabweans yellow cards which is going to really decrease their trade power and make it difficult for giraffe to be to be uh, successful with this strategy. Bum, bum's the word for her. But maybe it's a new leaf for Giraffe. You know, maybe she's, she's, she's left Rome. She has the Mongols now. She has the Russians now. Maybe it's time to let the Zimbabweans go as well. We'll see. And I forgot about this, but Flesh uh, dis used a time wrinkle on trade and progress. So actually Giraffe gets to do it again. She debated not doing a trade at all, but she's going to try it. She's going to see what happens with this second go, and I thought we could roll that up together. So it's another trade between the Zimbabweans and the Pharaonic Egyptians. Pharaonic Egyptians have a better trade score now. They get a plus five to their roll. Zimbabweans only get plus three. So that works out to be um, eight for the Pharaonic Egyptians and seven for giraffes, Zimbabweans. So let's roll this up and we'll just take a look. 
Oh, I hate this die. It's a advertising die. That's a six, though. So we'll just use this one instead. Um, I don't hate it, but I don't like using it. I especially don't want to use it on camera because that's just advertising for some game shop that I don't know if it's a great game shop. Um, they gave me a free die. I know that, but it's because I gave them some money for some products and they wanted to advertise. Anyway, um... Which, nothing wrong with that, but that doesn't make me want to, like, display it, I guess, or or use it, except for my own personal use, because I can zone out the words. And, you know, with games like this, you can never use too many dice. So, we're seeing a better roll here for Giraffe than before, right? Last threes and fours. Look at Run. She has more. So, just, that's going to be two attacks there. She's got four attacks. So, the three will get satiated by the defense die. And then the final one will get this. So Giraffe ended up winning that one. That might be better for her. Yep. So that's going to bump her Zimbabweans up ahead. They're the, they're the tops now. It's going to give her two points. Uh, the Egyptians from all these... Uh, Rut hasn't traded with the Egyptians in a long time. But they are clear up here now just from the Zimbabweans being here. I, I don't think Giraffe has hurt her really at all. Because uh, the trades have kind of been bouncing back and forth. But she'll be able to take some cards now. And this might change her mind about whether or not to keep the Zimbabweans. They're having a little bit of a payoff. A lot will probably depend on if she has a more tantalizing empire here in her Seven Ages hand. So the upshot of their card exchanges meant that they are now at a trade. They have, they have um, equal trade numbers once more. So they both have four as their trade number. It takes the Zimbabweans more yellow cards to equal the Phronic Egyptians because they start with a penalty. Um, but that's not going to be the end of Runt's trading excursion. She actually didn't choose trade for any of her empires. She, she hasn't done that much at all. Um, but Flush has, and he has worked it so that his Portuguese are going to be able to th trade three times this turn. And I think he's going to be going with... Um, the Papal States, every single time. They have a penalty to the trade, minus one. Um, doesn't feel like, you know, Runt is going to be too defensive of them because they don't even have any cards to lose. So they don't have a lot to lose. So um, how, how did he work it? Well, one, he made that loop so that there's going to be two trade in progresses this turn. And then he also has this bargain card, which lets him immediately do another trade after one is done. So I'll roll those up and let you know how it goes. But just so we get some idea on what's at stake, the, the Portuguese are right here. Okay, so they're pretty far along already. They have a potential of going six. One, two, three, four, five, six. They could get all the way up to trucks. Which is right before that. Wow, I didn't. I haven't counted this out until just now. I knew he was going to do that, but wow, this could be this could be going faster than I thought. Okay, the two ended up trading the same two cards back and forth uh, three times. I I think they decided to have a little fun, and they were cards that neither of them really wanted. So that worked out. Um, the rolls didn't work out so well for Flush. He had a he had an advantage of one die each time, and Partially you can see his comfort with what's going on. I mean, even even if he had failed all of them, he would be right here. Um, but as it, as it worked out, Runt won the first one. They tied the second one, and then Flush ended up winning the, the final trade. So he's here at 38, three away from the, 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 do, the point of doom. <laughs> We're in the maneuver phase. Cowboy has sent his English boats to attack flushes Portuguese boats right here and hmm, I think he'd actually did I do that right I think he's gonna do it like that instead of what I did um, I I overlooked this one I play I, I play kind of fast because I'm running out of time so he's gonna use this card on this one and then do this one straight up so here we have a um, we have a six to six, but then he's gonna get a bonus of plus two. So it's eight to six on the first one, and the second one is gonna be five to two because he played this outflank card. Sorry about that thinking on screen uh, or poor planning. So he said eight to six, seven, eight. So he flushes here. Alright, 
lot of attack dice here for Cowboy. Wow. So this is... He has, like, no defense there. But he is going to be punishing Flush, I do believe. All right, yeah, because Flush doesn't have much at all. So with this, he's going to get that. And he's going to get this and then three more I think uh, let's put that back actually because we're gonna have a we'll stop at that point where we're right here okay then he's gonna get this is gonna give him two of these and then here we're in a situation we haven't been before there's not enough for everyone to get the dice remember we're limited by how many dice are here um, so let's let the person who has more go first. He, here we're actually going to take turns. Normally this is kind of simultaneous. That's going to get him these three. This is going to get him these three. I guess it kind of works out. And then we'll say these, he just gets these. All right, that works out. So pretty pretty commanding win by Cowboy there, uh, given the odds. I mean, it wasn't as... as um, disproportionate as I originally thought. So before I figure out the consequences, I think we should, we'll just go ahead and roll up the next one there, keep those victory piles, and we'll do it all in one big mass, just for fun. So here we have a seven to two. That's like nothing. Um, I'm gonna do this off camera. We finished Civilized for the turn. Um, had two big com conversions to Christianity, both the Mongols who were without a god, and the Franic Egyptians who changed from uh, being Muslim to Christians, uh, which is nice for Giraffe. She got docked six points this turn just from not having her um, Islam folks uh, maneuver this round. So what else happened during the Civilized? Well, Japanese did some wackadoodle doos on the, the English. They... Um, not a lot, actually. Well, they got rid of the, the units in Peru, which took care of Cassie Sachet, which was a, a leader that Cowboy had there. That was sad for him. Not Cassie Sachet. Why well, remove the wrong card? It was Bill Hickok, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, sorry. Cassie Sachet is a religious leader. Bill Hickok's gone. Um, anything else happened? Oh, the Industrial Revolution happened right here. The, Portuguese, the Japanese played that on the Portuguese, so now they get to double income from cities. Too bad they don't have a lot of cities, so that's not going to be huge. But he did it for the point. Wants to, wants to button that up if at all possible. Um, I'll do the scoring and come back with you. It was some sad scoring for Cowboy. He's been waiting for this turn when, when he would be the first one. He's been holding two cards that would... would um, help improve his scoring. One that would double the score of one of his empires and the other one that would double everyone's score. So if he had double from an empire and he was already scoring well uh, and then he was able to double everyone's score then you know he would have a, a, high, a greater gain from that than the others who got doubled. So if you double four uh, you get you only gain four. If you double eight, you gain an additional eight. So that was his idea. Uh, he waited till this turn because you win on ties, generally if you're the first player, unless someone else has a philosopher. Um, and he was, yeah, he he maybe could have done it last turn, but he was hoping to you know have the progress lead as well and be able to to have more points to double. Unfortunately, after he played both of those call cards, which were Expanded Glory and Glorious Glory, expensive cards, there were a total of 13. Giraffe played Glory, po or not Giraffe, Runt played Glory Pour Moi. So it was only the Egyptians, Franic Egyptians, that got to score this turn. I looked to see only if Cowboy had a card to block that. Um, that's actually in both Giraffe and Run's best interest that he doesn't score big. Um, even though they're missing out on points this turn, uh, Cowboy missing out on points is worse for him than it is for the others. So pretty rough move by Runt there.